next presentation uh, uh, is on the strategic importance of the blue economy to Sri Lanka. Uh, the presenter is Damsari Ranasinghe. She's an attorney at law uh, by profession uh, from the University of London and a master's in international relations from the University of Colombo. She's currently working as a research assistant to the Inter Institute of National Security Studies in Sri Lanka under the Ministry of Defense. Prior to this, she worked as an attorney at law uh, and implementer of the Bribery Commission for Sri Lanka. She's also worked uh, Public Relations Committee and Constitutional Reforms and has volunteered at the United Nations during her students day. We really look forward to your, your presentation on the blue economy, it's fastly growing currency and uh, uh, we're ready for your presentation. Good morning everyone, conference chair, fellow panelists, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all. My topic today is the strategic importance of blue economy to Sri Lanka, which I believe is very important, very much in line with this year's conference theme, which was the change in dynamics in the global environment. So my structure of the presentation would be to give you all a brief explanation as to what blue economy is and as to why we talk about blue economy now. And then I would go on to speak of why it is your important to Sri Lanka, issues and challenges we may face when implementing these policies. And if time allows, I will also look into some success stories of certain countries which have implemented the economy already. So, Although there are various definitions of blue economy given by numerous organizations and authorities, in layman terms, blue economy would mean the sustainable use of marine and oceanic resources for economic purposes, or simply greening of the ocean economy. So, as you might already know, oceans cover more than 72% of the Earth's surface. Yet, only 5 to 7% of the ocean resources are only explored. So regardless of the vast technological development and the advancements of air power and everything, 80% of global trade is still continued and carried out by means of ocean. The unhealthy and the non-environmentally friendly practices, human-based activities, have caused and led to the dire resource scarcity in the land-based resources. So these practices have been pra happening for the past centuries and decades. So it has now, and it has been the main catalyst for the global warming and the climate change process. Since, these, since our own human-made activities have exhausted the land-based resource, we are now looking for the oceans. We are now, the academics, the scholars, and the Scientists have identified this millennia as the era of the ocean. 2015 marked a remarkable change in the human development. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals were introduced with Agenda 2030, where the concept of the green economy and the blue, green energy was first emerged. And as a result of it, Life below water was f introduced as the 14th Sustainable Development Goal. These blue economic initiatives, however, continue to uphold the principles of low carbon resource efficiency and social inclusion as well. Given on the slides are the targets that this 14th uh, SDG goal uh, requires to be targeted by 2030 by most, and one of it is that it targets to increase the economic benefits to small, industri small island developing states and least developed countries from the sustainable use of marine resources. The SIDS concept paper conceptualized oceans as development spaces where the spatial planning integrates conservation, sustainable use, oil and mineral wealth extraction, bioprospecting, and sustainable energy production, as well as marine transport. Therefore, the potential of blue economy is vast and covers a wide spectrum of sectors as shown in the slide. However, this by far is not limited to these sectors. 
When speaking of the regional aspects, the Indian Ocean Rim Association has identified six priority areas for regional cooperation of blue economy in the Indian Ocean. These include fisheries and aquaculture, renewable ocean energy, seaports and shipping, offshore hydrocarbons and seabed minerals, marine biotechnology research and development, as well as tourism. Then when we look at Sri Lanka, why is blue economy so important to Sri Lanka? Why should we look at, uh, Sri, why should we implement blue economic policies in Sri Lanka? Apart from the geostrategic location of Sri Lanka, it consists of sea territory which is 7.8 times larger than its land area. The exclusive economic zone itself extends to 200 nautical miles and if the unclosed article 76 claim comes through, it might even extend furthermore. So uh, it, also is one, it is also one of the focal points of the major sea routes and is a very high tourism and leisure hub in the region. Colombo port remains one of the busiest ports which can afford triple E class vessels in the region. Not only the sea territory, even when you speak of the land biomass, 90% of the land area is covered by river basins as the country is enriched by more than 103 rivers. This, in turn, enhances the mineral richness of the ocean around us. With 25% of the population relying on coastal and ocean-based activities, it is vital that a sustainable oceanic and a coastal practices are adopted to counter the global challenges. In October 2016, the Sri Lankan government promoted blue economy in its Sri Lanka Next program. While this, this, uh, the government identified sustainable development strategies which we should implement. Uh, however, this is a very timely, uh, necessary initiative. However, this needs action and implementation. Merely having it in the books and papers is not enough. But certainly when implementing these, we face certain issues and challenges, which is inevitable. The unhealthy fishing, the tourism and marine practices, together with uh, piracy and as uh, Captain Kulatunga was saying, the drug trafficking and the depletion of resources and the land area. These are, these, all of these challenges must be f addressed systematically. Therefore, a national maritime strategy or a national blue economic policy is vital at this stage. Identification of all the necessary stakeholders and the objectives with a very comprehensive action plan and a uh, policy mechanism should be promoted. Also, the interagency cooperation and regional cooperation is very important when implementing this kind of policies since uh, all of these uh, challenges as well as the policies are integrated in some way or the other. You cannot exclude one aspect from another. But the biggest challenge of them would be the global warming and climate change, which we have no running away from. Because irrespective of our geographical, political, social, economical differences, all humans are faced and equally affected by this global warming and consequences. Hence, it is necessary that we should take actions as one, like we should uh, enhance uh, the human activities in a sustainable manner to mitigate uh, these challenges. So this slide shows a blue economic policy cycle. This is what which was used by the Caribbean islands when implementing their blue economic policies. However, when preparing an action plan, uh, while going through all these processes, it is necessary that we must keep four key factors as our guiding line. These should be our basic backbone of the policies. Those would be taking, looking into the human needs of the people, securing their health, energy, minerals, job security, political, secu political security, and the community well-being and the ecosystem stability. Uh, further, there should also be a systematic approach when addressing the policies uh, where um, 
to where the necessary tools and models are integrated and the sustainable standards. The policy plan must also be achievable. There is, uh, you should have short, mid-term, and long-term policy actions, and we must not be too ambitious uh, in uh, our policies and be realistic. So look, looking at some of the countries which have successfully uh, adopted blue economic policies, Mauritius and Seychelles uh, remain on the top. And uh, however, the Mediterranean has taken more of a regional uh, strategy towards blue economy, while Seychelles, Barbados, and Mauritius have taken a more nationalistic approach. The, in Gambia and Madagascar, they have a more community-based uh, mechanisms, and in Norway and European Commission seeks integration, integrated governance. Um, therefore, Sri Lanka should first decide on what model suits us the best and then work our policy upwards. Other than making a policy and then, then deciding whether it is feasible or not, we must look at the perspective of being effective and then actually make the policy. So I would like to end my presentation with a quote from US marine biologist Sylvia Earle who says that no water means no life. No blue means no green. So this is high time we go blue for the sake of the planet and human race. While this poses a great challenge for the country, I see of this as a great opportunity for Sri Lanka to foster in the region. Thank you. These are my references, and I would like to thank Admiral Kolaberge and the Director General of Institute of National Security Studies in conducting my research. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dom Suri, for your uh, very informative presentation and uh, your inspirational remarks and uh, uh, commitment uh, to what you study. Our next presentation.